Welcome to my uh, 101, the final session. We'll be covering uh, lighting, and rendering, and uh, some render passes and layers, and hopefully have time for some compositing at the end. My name is Paul Campbell. I've been working in 3D for uh, the last several years, places like Industrial Light and Magic, some small shops, Big Idea, Magnetic Dreams, etc. I'm looking forward to covering our topics tonight, and especially for uh, you, you students that have been signed up in the class for a while, looking, looking forward to wrapping this up for you guys. Let's see, uh, we're going to go ahead and kick it off. Let me pull up my notes here, and uh, yeah, let me just share briefly about myself. Some of my, my strengths are lighting, rendering, script writing, tool building, um, uh, experience with particles, comping, and just in general solving problems that you, you have at, uh, in production. And speaking of problems in production, I came across a site this week called CG Mains. If you were to Google CG Mains, it's a blogspot site. And I'm having dual monitor issues. Here we go. And I saw this main that I thought was funny. I thought I would share it. I don't know if you guys can see that this, depending on how well the uh, go to meet and stuff works, but this one is what we experience in 3D with all the um, issues and hangups that we have to, and hoops we have to jump through. I thought it'd be relevant. So, anywho, let's get started. Uh, we'll start with our scene, uh, and I will, uh, I will, I, I assume I'll have an avenue of posting sort of the uh, scene we'll be working with. I dropped in a little table piece of geometry. I saw that there was a, I was handed uh, off files from Zach. And I didn't have a table geometry, but dropped one in, used his shader, used some of the standard shaders that you guys had in there. And uh, let's, uh, let's get going. So, we're, so just to do some general talking about lighting. You know, lighting is very complex. We're just going to be skimming the surface over um, many techniques. We're going to be talking about some three-point lighting. We'll be talking about some area lights, looking at, briefly looking at the sun system inside of Maya showing you the basics of it. HDRI. Um, hopefully we'll talk a little bit about motion blur and as we have this cherry that you should have animated in your scene. We'll talk about render layers. Hopefully time for render passes and then we'll comp those. I'll be comping them in um, After Effects if that is a, if someone has a specific request and they'd rather see it you know, in or something relevant to Photoshop specifically or something, but I'll be, I'll be doing it in After Effects as we, as we get there. So let's do this. Let me pull up the first image. Now it's getting stuck on my second monitor, excuse me. So to just speak briefly about, and I do hope this is coming through, three, we're gonna do some three-point lighting. And that's the idea of lighting something with three lights. We have a key light, the main sort of brightest light that's um, lighting on one side of our scene, a fill light, so that we won't have blackness and darkness. And we'll have some, uh, something we can see the entire figure or characters that we're lighting, and a backlight to, to add some some brightness to the rim, some often called the rim light of our subjects. So we're going to be using uh, this strategy to start off tonight. So off we go. And I'll start off with just some, so I've got a Something I always do when I'm starting off my scene is uh, create a camera and lock it and lock it down. So I've got a render cam that I've dropped in and look through it, take a quick uh, render. It's just got the default light on. Um, let me. So one thing we have our in this scene we have our render settings set to full HD. And something that really helps when you're trying to light a scene, you know, it takes a long time to render all the pixels of a frame that's 1920 by 1080 or even bigger if you're working on film. And so one shortcut that we lighters use is you go inside of Maya, go to, when, when you have your render view up, go to options, test resolution. And here you can see where you can go from your full render setting and drop down to you know, one of these optional sizes. Um, so I'm going to be working at this 480 by 270 size, and uh, let's do it. So I'm going to turn off. A great place to start is with complete black blackness. So I like to turn off this default light. 
and uh, take a quick render and make sure that we have nothing going on. So we're starting, we're starting from scratch, but we have an alpha on our scene. And here we go. Let's go for some lights. So I'm going to switch over to my perspective camera. And let's create some spotlights. So I'm going to make a spotlight. It should be selected. I'm going to look through it. Start. So I want to start making our key light just like that image that we saw. We're going to put our bright, brightest key light off to the right side of if this is our camera over here where we'll be looking from. We'll light our scene with this spotlight. And I'm going to hit Control A to pull up my light settings. The spotlight shape. And here we'll, we're going to start playing with uh, the size of our cone, the number angle to soften it. All right. So we'll try to get about a three quarters angle hitting our scene. And let's go ahead and have a render and see, see where we're starting off. All right, no shadows, no nothing. Looks real basic. So let's start off. I'm going to dim that a bit. And we're going to start start with some sh our shadows. So old school method of creating shadows was using depth maps and now we pretty much don't need to ever do that since our computers are um, strong enough and fast enough that we can almost always use ray tracing. So that's where we will start. i go for our light radius of 4 to begin. And we're going to drop in some shadow rays. This is to, well, I'll leave it at one. We'll give that a look. Let's see what that does when we start off. So let's have a render. Okay. So here we can see we're, you know, we've turned on shadows. Um, the, the, our shadow quality is low. We have, we have some jagged edges on our shadows. And let me just confirm what our quality settings are set to. So right now we're at not the best of quality, but we'll go, so we'll go ahead and bump that up to two. So this is the aliasing setting under quality, and this will clean up our edges. I'm going to also bring this, our test resolution size up a bit and do it again. have another go. Hopefully everyone will be able to see this a little better. And let me know if I'm speaking too softly or anything like that. Okay. So that's doing that's doing all right. I'm gonna go ahead and increase our shadow rays and our depth. Let's see. I don't know that we're going to see a lot of change, but let's give it a go. So instead of doing the whole image, I'm just going to focus on the shadows here in the corner. I drawing, we draw our render region box and punch this red button that will render just that square, which is another time saver. So we like to, when we're doing test renders, we like to render sizes smaller than our actual size so that we can get through iterations faster. And likewise, use, use this uh, render region to save time as well. increase our light radius and see if that will soften us up a little bit. Let's go to 16 and see what that does. Okay, by increasing our 
light radius, something that that does is soften our edges on our shadow. So that's what I was wanting to do, accomplish is try to get this a better look. So once we start increasing this light radius and softening these edges, we need to likewise increase our shadow ray count, which will make it so that our edges won't get boxy, but that they'll stay, stay smooth and soft. So we'll go ahead and take that up a notch. I might. So, as you can also tell, that that by increasing our radius and our ray count, that our it does take longer for the for it to uh, render that frame, render that amount of the image. Okay, we're, I'm going to call that key light possibly done. We may come back and we do give it a little. We may come back and brighten it up, but let's go. Let's make this our. Uh, let's go ahead and go for the fill can. All right. Ah. Try again. Hello. There we go. Okay, just made a second spotlight. I should have should name. Let me go ahead and pause and do that. So we'll call this first spotlight we created the key lights. And can I select it this way? And our second light we'll call the fill light. Okay. And we'll go, we're going to want to kind of fill in the dark sides of our geometry. So let's look, so kind of back here, we're going to want to fill in this darkness back here. When I do, I guess with spotlights, we can duplicate them okay. It's with area lights that I get nervous when we copy them. Their, their attributes don't tend to go with them. So the fill light will want much dimmer. And All right. See how that looks. So that's a little too bright. Let's see where we're starting from. We are now, let's turn that down even more. Um, also something I would want to do myself is we've, we're getting sort of two, we're getting two highlights on things. With this fill light, we can turn off emit specular and that will reduce these highlights. So now this, our cherry will only have one highlight coming from the key. Same thing for the cake and the cup. So let's turn this down. Forgot to save that window. We'll go ahead and turn on shadows on that on that light next. All right, save that one. Let's dive into the shadows for our fill light. Back to ray trace. Go ahead and take our radius up to 12, similar to our P. Shadow rays, we'll do six, and four. And we'll just do these items to keep it a little faster.
and also while this is rendering, you know, we haven't we haven't got into there's many many attributes in these lights we haven't got into. We'll be talking about um, decay. Um, we'll be talking about area lights that can look be like rectangles that create you know long rectangular um, highlights on your objects. Let me see where that one's coming from. So I really would like to fill that in better. So let's go look through that one. So our cuts my way. So we'll give a little. Let's try that out. Let's take it up just a smidge. Let's see how it's coming. I'll take up a little more than that. Okay, that's a, that's re, that's reasonable for a fill. We're not totally black there, but it, it is maybe a little too dark. Um, go ahead and touch it up. Okay, and one thing I didn't show just some, is that this is the animated scene. Put the cherry in it. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on to the rim. So the rim we'll want to put, or backlight as we call it sometimes. Uh, we'll put that right in the back. Let's see where we want to hit. We'll try from over here. And often this will be your most intense one. And sometimes we only turn on emit specular and turn off the emit diffuse to get the right results on the rim that we want. And leave shadows off for now. All right, let's go for a full frame render this time. Save that previous render and punch it. Ooh, that's really nasty. So our table is even is getting pounded with this rim light, so let's go fix that. We're gonna hit it like so. Let's see what that does. Let's start just focusing on the cake. Okay, since I want this rim light just to hit, just to hit the cake, and we'll go ahead and draw on the mug. Let's see if we're getting. I don't, I'm not getting anything. And then, yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to Maya's light linker. And 
So light linking is, if I need to speak to it, is you can assign lights to her to hit certain pieces of, pieces of geometry and to not hit other pieces of geometry. Before I do that, let me go ahead and name my rim light. Right. So we'll go to window, relationship editors, light linking, and we'll do light centric. All right, so we'll take our rim light and exclude it from hitting the table. But what is my table called? Let's call it table. So if you'll down control and select something you don't want it to hit. So you want to tell it not to hit the table. Business, yes. I think I need to hit that one. Just checking. Okay. Let's try it again. And let's just start with the cake. Okay, that's hitting it way too strong, but it's on there in our cake material. Looks like we can do some love. But now, as you can see, we're not, with that light, light, light linking set correctly, now we're not hitting the table any longer. Let's go ahead and just do this whole bottom half and take a render. Okay, I'm just going to adjust my angle here to get it off of that material. Try to run the cake one more time, and then we'll, we'll move on to our other a couple of methods here of just stepping through some basics. It's a little bit more like a rim, a little bit strong. You have a question in questions panel for you. Okay. Where? <laughs> questions, here we go. Could you please show again where do you open the option box for the, oh, it didn't finish. Could you please show again where do you open the option box for light? Yeah, go ahead and finish that one. I don't know how to say your first name. Rico. No, relationship power. Okay, and you're saying that you see it now. I'll show it one more time just for everyone's sake. To launch the light linker, that's under window, relationship editors, light linking, and then you can choose to do it light centric or object centric. Thank you for the heads up on the question. 
Okay. Um, yes. So that was just, this is just kind of very, just very quick um, basics. You know, nothing's looking photo real or anything, but just walking through the steps of a th three point lighting. Let's look at that from top view. You can see the setup here. I don't know how well you can see that uh, on the film, but we have our camera here, key light left, fill light right, rim light coming at the back. All right. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be the word for our three-point lighting this evening. Let's go. Let's move on to... Let's start doing the same thing. But let's start using some area lights. And uh, I'll have to do. Uh, I'll drop in a box for a background and things like this. So we'll we'll do the same thing. That we'll, we'll reset our scene. I'm going to blow out our lights. I'm going to delete these guys, and then we're going to start working with area lights. Okay, and to double check that we're back to square one. I will render a black frame just to make sure. All right. So that was with spotlights. Now we're going to work on using area lights. So switch over to my perspective camera. And to create an area light, create lights, area light. And this time we're going to try to get a little bit more photo real. We're going to, so an area light can be, it looks like a rectangle light. It's something specific to mental ray. And we're going to start playing with the decay and scale and distance and all these things that will affect our scene. So this area light, we're going to set it up. It's going to be our key. Light. And area light has some unique settings. Let's just start up at the top. We'll leave it set to one for now, just so you can see what it looks like at that setting. And there's our light shape. So we'll be, co we'll be coming to this one just shortly. Okay, let's go ahead and let me move our red test resolution down us down a notch. If that doesn't mess anybody up, if it does mess you up, if you can't see things clearly at this resolution, do let me know, and I'll go raise the size back up again. Okay, so this is our area light set to one, and you can see it's just kind of laying down a little bit of light. So what we want to do is we want to start using this light a little bit more photorealistically, and something that lights have is decay. If you put your hand next to your lamp at your desk and you look at how bright the light is right next to that light bulb, it's going to be very bright. And then you'll move back a foot, and it will it will still be bright, but will have changed a lot. And then so once you get about a you know two three feet away, then it's kind of an even slower decay in uh, in brightness the further away from that light you get. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this area light up to have that lifelike decay. And so here we punch this decay rate. We take it all the way to quadratic. And then let's see what happens to our, let me delete all of these previous images that we had. Okay, so here's where we are. Now with our intensity still set at one, we've dropped down to quadratic. We take a with decay rate to quadratic. Let's render. And it's essentially black. Because with that, that level of decay rate, it's not nearly bright enough. So we're going to go to, let's go to a big number first. Let's try 250. Let's see how that does. So now we're just barely getting it at 250. We're going to go to 1,000.
All right, that's starting to show up now. Well, now we're starting to get something possibly usable. Okay, and in the end, we're actually going to be, we'll probably be cranking this up to around 2,000. But before we take it all the way up, let me take us down to an additional setting inside of the area light. And that is, first we'll do be using ray trace shadows. Yes, we'll do, we'll set rays to eight, four. And our light shape, we're going to set to rectangle and leave it there. And let's make it a little bigger. So what this light, light shape, when we click light shape and make it visible and the shape intensity, this will make it so that instead of having a circle, as you can see, sort of a rounded hot spot on each on our geometry, as you can see, just a dot on the cherry, it should have an out, if, even if I make it tall, you know, it should show up as a rectangle reflecting off of there. So we've got that visible, we've got the shape intensity set to one. I'm going to raise this intensity to, let's go 1500. Now let's have a render. It's a lot brighter now. All right. Let's see what we want to do next with that guy. Let me drop in some let me drop in some geometry in the back of the scene real quick. Let's make some bugs need to just keep popping up on my guy. So we're gonna make a just some planes and spread them around in the back. The light to bounce around on. Oops. Probably could have made a box and just deleted a face, but we only have backwards normal, so we'll just do this real quick. We'll do one more for the top. Okay, how does that look for down here? Let's do one on the bottom. No, we don't probably don't need it. It's quick. Okay. Okay, now that we've made a box. In here, let's throw a let's throw a shader on that, uh, kind of a, a white shader back there. So we'll go make a something that's not shiny. We'll make a Lambert white and throw that on all that geometry. We'll call this walls. Shader. Let's select all that. Geo we just made. I'm going to group them. Control G to group. Double click to rename. I'm just going to call that walls. And with those all selected, apply this. Oh my goodness. 
The monitor is getting small. <laughs> Hello. So with all that selected, assign material to selection. That take. I don't know. I think so. Okay. Let's just have a quick render to see where we stand. Okay, now we have that area light splashing across the background right there. Let me just make sure that that, those sh that shader's on there. One more time. And I might, well, we'll just leave it at that. I might cheat and crank that up a little brighter, but. Okay, so that is our area light number one. Let me, let me take a, let me do a higher resolution render of this one. I want to see the status of these shadows. They look like they're okay because I think I already added some shadow rays to it. Thank you for your patience as we step through many renders tonight. I'll try to make them as fast as we can. I'll spend too, too much time taking multiples. Okay. Liking that so far. Okay. Let's... Let's make a set. Let's make another area light. So it's a little bit noisy back in the corner. We're getting nice reflections, and it's definitely soft underneath these guys. So yeah, let's let's add in one more area light. And as I was mentioning earlier, I like to make area lights from scratch, because when you duplicate them, they tend to um, be messy and not work correctly at first. So here we go, another area light. I'm going to go ahead and make this one more of a, of a rim area light as opposed to going for the fill next. So scaling these does affect the uh, the brightness and how how much light it contributes to the scene. Um, so again, we'll set to quadratic for the decay rate. Um, so we were at fifteen hundred before. We'll go twelve hundred on this one, I think. I might be turn them all up in a moment. Let's see, ray trace, yes. Use light shape, yes. Um, for this one, we're going to well, we'll we'll start with rectangle and let you see what that results is, and give it a whirl. Yes, and these area lights do take longer with their high samples and visible cells and things. Oh, and I forgot to check that box here. So this is what the rectangle light does, is it only shoots light from where its plane is and forward. It doesn't shoot, it doesn't emit 
light backwards. So when you have the rectangle shape, you end up with something like this. So as you can see, let me show you that window. So it's this this fact that there's, you know, if I were to scale this up, this is where it intersects with the walls. You know, that's where the light's going. It's going there and towards our cake and cherry and mug, but it's not, you know, hitting anything uh, further back. So to resolve that, we have a choice of, we have a disk, sphere, sphere would emit everywhere, and cylinder and custom. We're, we're going to try out cylinder, and I will hit visible. I no, guess we won't really see the hotspots, we'll make it visible anywho. And let's bring this intensity down. Let's try. Let's try 900, that might be too much, but let's try it out. So next up, after we wrap up going over these area lights, we'll, be, we'll look at the sun system. And we'll do some HDRI, and then we'll start trying to kick out. Uh, then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back and do motion blur, render layers, render passes, and some comping if that works for you guys. So that's really bright and nasty. We'll need to move that out of frame. We are getting a nice soft lighting on the back of that cake, and you can see our highlight in our cherry as well. It's going to kill that because that's taking too long. We need to change it anyways. All right, let's move. Let's see. Let me look through here. I'm going to. that back. Move our scene open. Let's try it. Let's see. Okay, let's try that out. I'll drop it down even lower. Let's go for 750. And I'm going to go smaller size since these renders are taking a while. I can hear a cat meowing somewhere. Okay, so that's still really hot, um, but we'll let's wrap that wrap this up. Let's bring this one. Let's move it away from the wall. Let's see if we got that highlight resolved there. Okay, it's looking a little better. And then we'll make one one quick one quick area light to do it to be a fill and we'll crank up our let's crank up this key light here in the front. Where's my layers? Key light. We're gonna raise this one up to two thousand. See if that's not too much. 
and we'll make a fill. Oops. And this noise we're getting here that you can see in the, on the wall, uh, that's resolved with shadow rate, increasing our shadow rays. Crank that up and see if that will help us out. It might be coming from the other light too, I'm not sure. All right, so we increased our key light over here. Our rim light's too soft, but let's move on and make a fill. So same as previous. Okay, set to quadratic, race raised. Use light shape, we'll stick with rectangle, we'll make it visible. And let's do it. So there's a whole, there is a, an additional workflow that I just want to at least mention that uh, when you're really shooting for photo reel is that is called using a linear workflow. And that means we have to, you have to adjust gamma, your gamma settings on your textures. You have to adjust for compensating if your textures are 8-bit or 32-bit or 16-bit, whatever type they are. Um, there's some settings in, um, in Maya render settings where you can enable color management. And this linear workflow allows for you to get even more photo reel um, when you're, when you're, that's a, something, a topic for another day, but I just wanted you to have heard the word linear workflow. And if you're curious, you know, on your own, go look for it. Or maybe we have some uh, classes here at 3D Buzz. I'm unaware. Maybe that's something I could present on another day for y'all. Um, so this one's too bright. Let's turn this down and then let's move let's move on to sky walking through skylights and HDRIs after one more fast render. So you know, question. So the question is, so does the scaling only affect the area light or does it affect others as well? Um, the scaling affects the area light and, uh, and doesn't uh, affect the others. Um, their scale is just an icon, whereas you would be looking at their, the cone angle, for example, if you're using the spotlight, it would be the cone angle that determines what's going on there. Now we were getting too hot on the rim, but let's try thinking that one up one more time, and then we'll move along. So 
so lighting is something that takes a lot of time. You know, there's, I've had shots where I'm working on, you know, you're working on one shot for three days, four days in a row, you know, 10 hours a day. And every morning you're bringing the shots that you've lit the previous day that have rendered overnight to your director and having him look at them and critique them and asking for changes and things like this. So, you know, uh, lighting is, is something that you can get you can get quick at, but it takes, takes some time. Obviously, in my opinion, we could spend a lot of more time on these scenes, these are just very basically lit. We could spend a lot more time making them um, better, but we have a lot of several more things I'd like to cover for you all tonight. So we will move along. Let's do let's do HDRIs next. So I will blow away my lights again. Oops. Okay. And let's do a quick render, make sure it's black again. Okay, there's this, uh, if you don't know what HDRIs are, and haven't thought about needing to talk about them, HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Image. And a high, a high dynamic range image is something that when, oh, this is going to be ho horrible to speak it verbally to you, but I'm not prepared to show, you, show it to you visually on this one. Um, if you were to take a JPEG off of a website, like the picture, like a picture with the sun and some lights, some lights in it, if you took that image into Photoshop and you tr and you dimmed it, it would go to ugly, gross grays. But if you took the same image that was a high dynamic range image that was consisted of multiple exposure images, uh, and you were to slide your, uh, you know, darkening it or brightening it. You, the, the image would lighten and darken as though you were twisting a dimmer switch in your living room. I have no idea if that uh, made sense verbally to you guys, but that's what uh, an HDRI is. So uh, a, a, a wonderful place to go get HDRIs is, let's see if I can pull this up. And for some reason, I, all my windows come up. There is a, if you Google S and then IVL for image-based lighting and archive, your first hit is a website from some people who, they wrote a book um, all about HGRIs. What's the name of their book? I have it, the HGRI Handbook. I own this book. It's a wonderful book. And their site is wonderful as well. So if you go to hgrlabs.com, and their SIVL archive, which is image-based lighting archive, you you will have get to download. You have the op option to download a bunch of. Let me use my screen here. They have a huge collection of HDRIs that are wonderful, and you'll see if you if you're not familiar with them, you'll see how we can use them. Let's see. We have. A, I think we might have another question. Let me pull that down. What machine do you use for rendering? Um, I use my own personal box, but you know, ideally, when I'm working somewhere, they have a, a render farm, and that's what I use if that answers the question. I have a Mac. If that helps. Okay. Yeah, so there's a bunch. These are all HDRIs that when you download them, it, it comes with thumbnails and HDRs that we will, and I, and I, I went and downloaded their starter IBL, SIBL collection. It's got four sets. So let's uh, let's use one of those. So, you know, right now, as we saw, I did a I did a render. Let me get rid of all the images we've been storing. Okay, we're down to nothingness. So to get to our HDRI settings, we'll open up the render settings tab. And let me do. I'm gonna let's see. Just for a heads up to people for time, I'll cover this HDRI, and then I'll blow that away, and then we'll cover the sun and sky system and then we'll take our break. Okay. Uh, so under the indirect lighting tab, under render settings, under image-based lighting, we'll hit create. And then if your Maya project is set up, this takes you to your source images. So in my source images, I should have 
I've not seen it. Ooh, I'm in the wrong folder. Let's go to the right folder. Source images, apartment reflection HDR. So I will apply that. So this is what is so what is this? What are we what are we accomplishing? Well first I guess we'll have a render. So we've dropped it in. Let me just punch render and see what we get. So originally before, you know, we had a black frame. Now let's have a render. So we're still getting black, but that's not what I was expecting. Let's try that again. I'm going to go to quality and I'm just going to skip straight to there's a drop down here. I'm going to choose production. And I was actually expecting it to be all lit up nice and pretty. Let's try that again. One, two, three. What? I don't know what's going on. I just I, I went through this just a day or two ago. One moment. Let me figure out what's up. Oh, that's because we have all of our geometry everywhere. So we also need to clear out uh, the box that we have, all the boxes that we made. So I'm going to select the walls group and hit Control H to hide that. And of course, that would be why we were getting blackness because there was no light coming inside except for a little bit from the front. Okay, so let's try again. Okay, that's more like it. So. So what is, what is an HDRI accomplishing? So what it's doing for us is it's, it's making our scene, our table, and our cherry, and our cake, and this, it's giving, it's, what this is is a way of getting the indirect lighting. So we're, we're taking this, oh yeah, I should show you what this, what does this image look like? Let's go find it. You can see, you can see the preview when I open this preview. Let me know if you were unable to see this, and I need to open up Photoshop or something for you to see it. But this is the apartment image that I chose. So our whole image is there is a sphere surrounding our scene. I'll show that to you next. So if I switch back to my perspective camera and I zoom way out, so basically Maya put this sphere on here, and which usually you can select. And on that sphere, it mapped in that image. And now this image is basically emitting light onto our scene. So let's go make it a little brighter. This is kind of a dull, a dull image. So one thing we could do to increase the brightness Let's see, if we'll, let's see if this will do it. I'll pull up this offset, and I'll just take a little square. And we also can fool with, you can take whites above white when you're working in HDR space. So you can see that it is brighter here after sliding that. You can take this from one to 1.5 that pushes white past white even further. Let's see what that does. And then we'll throw in a key light and see how stuff is looking. So yeah, that's brightening it right up. Let's make let's make a light.
So sending light rays to 12, shadow rays to six, radio limit to, let's go to three so we can get some bounces in there. Um, let's bring this up a little bit, one, one, two. Soften up the edges. Let's make this bigger. Okay. Let's see what this does. No, that's a little bright. Let me pull it down. So, as you can see, I mean, this having having this HDRI around basically asks, acts as a universal fill to the entire scene and gives you all of the indirect light that every little place. Would be. So, if we were, you know, if we were in this apartment, all this apartment is basically lighting our scene, and then we're just adding a key light to get some shadows and things. Let me bring that back down. Let's see how that looks. Uh, All right, um, so this is just a quick, you know, just a quick, just an example of what an HDR light can do, how far, you, including the, t the technique of HDRI images in your scene will get you quickly. It will just fill your scene right up with lights, get your reflections going, interacting with the environment. We don't have anything that's, unless we were to zoom in, let's do that for fun. Oops. Just for fun, because I think the cherry is rather reflective. Let's see if it's going to reflect our whole environment. I'd like to see that up closer. So here you can see it's kind of nice, you know, this this cherry, the table is giving us a feeling that we are, you know, we are in the room that that, that image is representing. So that's really great and quick. Okay. Um, let's move on to the skylight system. Let me, again, go ahead and delete what we have going on. So to delete our image base lighting that we've created, we just punch the delete button. And now let me make sure, yes. Okay, so let me punch physical sun and sky. So we just blam. Let's go see what it gave us. So the physical sun and sky is something that I remember it first existed in Max, and then they ported it over to Maya. Um, let's just have a render and see. So we were. Although I didn't wait this time, we did go back to black, or we should have gone back to black uh, as far as rendering goes. And now we've already dropped in our skylight. Let's go ahead and check that out, or excuse me, physical sun and sky. Oh, we're still with the old, yeah, the perspective camera, but that's all right. Be, we'll check it out. So here, this is an, a, a whole package of where not only do we have a sun that's shining down as basically in the noon position, it's also giving us a sky with sort of an, you know, an atmospheric color that's changing. Let's go ahead and switch to our render cam.
And adding the physical sun and sky is something where when it comes in, it just changes all kinds of presets. And so that's one of the reasons why our, our cake color is starting to wash out. This MI uh, subsurface shader that I put here isn't coming out right now. We have this almost looks like it's glowing. You know, uh, a bunch of a bunch of settings come in. It's something that you know, we could spend a lot of time stepping through. There's sun disk intensity, so you can act, there's actually a sun up in the sky that you can look at and see. Um, let's see if I can change the direction. So let me find. Let me go find our our sun control. It's an outliner. Outliner. Sun direction. Let me just move this out. Oops. So this right here is what rep this is not a working light. This is just a control that represents the sun. So if I take this sun and rotate it and put it at more of a evening position where it's lower, now you'll see the background change colors, hopefully, is what I'm expecting to see. Um, the, the light should be dimmer. The color of this sky should change. Let me punch it. Let's see the results. So now you can see we have a bit more of a dusk feeling. We've got longer shadows. We've got these colors um, that will make it look a little bit more closer to evening. So that is the. That is a just a glancing at the uh, sun, sun and sky systems. There's much, much more there. So, okay, um, I think now would be a good time to take a break. And then when we come back, we'll go over uh, render layers, why you would use render layers, render passes, how render passes are different than render layers, and then we'll do some compositing. So I don't know if I need to pass it over to... Uh, Nelson or Chris or anything like that, but uh, I'm going to take a break now if that's okay with you guys. All right, welcome back for the second half of our class. Uh, it'll be shorter than the first half, um, but here we go. So we're going to we're going to step through the process of reasons why we would use render layers, what render layers accomplish, and then we'll also talk, look at render passes, how to set those up, what they accomplish, and then we'll open up After Effects and use use the frames that we've generated. All right, so let's do this. Let's first let me switch to our render cam and let's just have a look at our wonderful uh, animation that you guys have been working on all class. I think that's fabulous. Let's see if my cherry has been smoothed. If you want to make sure your your geometry is smooth, everybody knows what I'm talking about, I assume, by punching uh, three on the keyboard. Make sure that's a little bit high res there for table. Um, and uh, let's just have a render. So this is one that I set up earlier in the day, and in order to try to speed it up. I left Final Gather and GI turned off to help the render go along a little faster. Let's make it bigger. Let's change that resolution. Whoa. Oh my. Okay, that's not working. Let's try again. There we go. Let's get a little bigger. Okay, so in this particular scene, we only have one moving object. Currently, I have my camera still. So one, one way that we can save work is instead of rendering the background for every frame, we can just render a still and then render our cherry on its own layer. 
And the only issue would be um, we do have a reflection issue that the cherry is creating a reflection. So if we were to separate them, what that would do. So let's let's get to work on that. So first things first, let's let this render finish. What size are we? Again, thank you for the live folks. Thank you, thank you for your patience waiting for these renders to happen. Okay, so we're at 960 by 540. Get a one to one. There we go. So that was worth it. That's why it took a while. Okay. Chuck all of our other renders we were working on and save this guy. Okay, so first we're going to make a still that is minus. The cherry all together. So let's go find the cherry in our outliner. Let me grab everything. Sorry, I'm I'm not as familiar. with the geo. So we have cherry body, and cherry stem. So I'm going to hide those. Control H. And I'll bring them right back. So I'm just going to do a render region over where the cherry is. Make it disappear. And then we will save this image out as RPG. It's PG for as in background. Okay, so let's I'll save image. We're going to save our images as PNGs tonight just because they're small and quick. So here we go. We'll call this cakeproj.pg.png. And that's right into the images folder. That's great. Okay, so we just, we're just, we just did that. That one manually since it's literally one frame. So let's bring back that saying display show selection. I think shift H does the same thing. Okay, so over here we want to be in our as opposed to our display or anim tab, we want to be in the render render layer tab. So this is render layers as opposed to render passes. So up in here I'm going to select everything in the outliner so I don't miss anything and I'm going to say punch this button. If I mouse over it, it should tell me. Create a new layer with all the items selected. One, two, three, go. Create a new layer. Okay. So this one is going to be cherry and Ruffle. Cherry and reflection. Okay, so right now everything is in here, and what we're going to do is we're going to select the table, and we need to find its mental race settings. Because what we want to do, want the table to do on this layer, because we have we have a render that has the table and the cake and the mug in it, but we need a render that has the cherry hopping, as we have this animated cherry hopping. But we also need to have the a layer of the reflection. In fact, I'd like them to be in the same way. The cherry hopping has a reflection of itself hopping. So we want to. We're going to select our table. 
hit control A. Let's go to render stats. And we're going to say, we're going to take off primary visibility, but leave visible in reflections. Okay, so let's do, and then we're going to also, um, uh, we're also going to pull up our hypershade. Well, let's go ahead and oh, let's pull up our hypershade window, under editors, hypershade. We're going to use something called the background shader. I don't know if you guys are already familiar with that or not, but a background shader will let us hide objects. Uh, we'll hold them out is another way of uh, another way of talking about it. So I'm going to go to Maya, and there is a use background shader. I'm going to pull that up, and once we pull up a use background shader, I'll just um, we'll call this hold out just so I can find it easily if it's in a list somewhere. So once we've created this hold out or or background shader. We need to turn the reflectivity to zero, turn the reflection limit to zero, and shadow mask to zero. And now we're going to apply that. I was expecting our table to still be present, but oh well. Now we're going to apply that to these items, not the table. So I'm going to right click, assign our background shader to those items. So now we should have, these will not show up in our render, we hope, except they will be held out in the alpha, so that when the cherry lands on here, it will be masked out. And the table should still have a reflection if we cross our fingers, I hope. The primary visibility off, visible in reflections. So let's see, let's see what we get. Usually, usually there's something a bit off, but let's check it out, one, two, three. Render. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Hmm. Okay. So if I go to the alpha, so I'm to fix that up. Let's go. I must have turned something down on the hyper shade. I didn't need to. So let's grab our. That shader will turn shadow mask back to well, opacity. Okay, it must just not show up in the alpha there, but it's because opacity is set to one. So those items should be there. Let's I'm not sure why that's not showing up, but let's try playing forward. Let's render this again. Let's need to turn on the primary visibility. I don't want to show up. Back to my render layers. I am in here. I'm in cherry. Selected. Let's see what that does. Make it visible. You can see how you can see here what the background shader is doing. It's holding out these items over here, just like it should. And in fact, to test it, 
I'll let this I'll let this frame finish rendering and then I'll fast forward to the last frame where the cherry is sitting in the cake and we should see the cherry occluded by the top of the cake. Okay, so let me fast forward to that last frame I was mentioning. So right there, I should be able to just draw a box around the top. We should see the cherry cut off a little bit. All right, that's working well. We have alphas for our table and our cherry. Still stuck on something. If we're stuck, if I'm stuck on this, we'll just move along. But let me give it one more go. Okay, well, we will just let that go, and we'll, we'll just do one with the, we'll include, we'll include the table bottom, and lay this, lay this layer with the table and the cherry over the top of our, of our still frame that's our background, just so we can move along. Okay, so next up we want to add, uh, we want some, we need some motion blur, so we're going to do that in in camera as opposed to so you, there there is an option that I'll, that's something for you guys to investigate on your own outside of this class you can do motion blur uh, with a render pass uh, but that's something a little bit more complicated but it's something for you to know that is there and does exist okay so let's open up our my uh, render settings go to quality and under the quality tab there's a motion blur tab and here right now by default we have motion blur turned off We'll set it to full because we have uh, an object that's being deformed. Our cherry is deforming. We'll set our motion blur by five, so that means it's looking at five frames, and that may be that may be a little high. We won't. Let's let's. I'm gonna try uh, three and see if that's okay. So let's go ahead and just. Where are we at? Let's do a full frame. Actually, let's not do a full frame. Let's just do the left side. <laughs> so here we should be seeing our cherry with motion blur on it. We should be able to check out our alpha and here you can see the alpha is blurred out so that's great that's working well and let's think that that's i really wish i could have okay, the table you know what we're gonna have to we're gonna just before for sake of time um i will write a note about how to resolve this though but for sake of time i am going to hide the table for this pass and we won't have a cherry reflection because if we keep the table in, the render time will shoot up, and you guys won't want to wait around for that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw the 
um, holdout shader onto this table as well. I wonder if we can. Uh, one thing I couldn't I could try is set in making it reflective. So if we had a bump. So one way of solving this is we could put a bump on here and then but we'll just it's just gonna have a smooth reflection. I'll 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 make a note for you guys as to how to resolve this, but let's check that check out this render real quick. Back to color. Wonder if there's a reflection down here. Uh, yes. Oh, no. Yes. There was a reflection of sorts. Okay. Although it does, it's not going to match the bump that's on our table. We'll go ahead and just let it roll like that. Okay. So right now, let's go back to our render layers. We have the master layer, uh, which was where we got our still from, and this layer is just our cherry hopping. So let's go to render settings. We're gonna tell it where to save this out to. So we'll go to common. Um, I've already set it to PNG. Um, what's our size? We're at HD 720. Let's just go 10, well, yeah, let's keep that because it should go fast. Um, because that's what our background was set to. Or no, it wasn't, what was what our background render set to? Let's go look. Oh my. Tell you in a second. Looking up what our background image was rendered at. Doo -doo -doo. It is I lost it. What was it? All these windows, too many windows, too many windows. Okay, our background is what size is it? Oh my goodness. You show us back to this one I'm looking for. So we're 960 by 540. Okay, let's do that. So back to our render settings. Uh, 60 by 540. Let's see if that keeps the cherry in frame. So I did turn on the grid, but gate mask, and it shows you exactly where you're going to be rendering. Okay, so now that we got that resolved, we're going to be rendering at the correct size, our 960 by 540 size. Let's set our, let's have our frame rendered to a directory. Let's say um, cherry slash, and then instead of typing in something, I'm going to say a insert render layer name. So that's this right here. So right now it's going to render to images, my images cherry slash cherries and ruffle. I need to change that to a sequence of images name.pound.ext, I'll set the padding to three, start, and these, these frames should render quickly since it's just the cherry, even though it's only one box. So we've got a hundred frames, is that right? Yep, yeah, hundred frames. So we'll set our start frame to one. And I, I, I am going through this part quickly, um, so please uh, ask questions if I say, talk over something too quickly. And we'll save our scene. I'll save scene. And then now we're going to batch render. So we go to the render settings and render. And here's batch render. I'm going to pull up the options. And hopefully 
this won't crash uh, the fact that we're doing a webinar. We're going to batch render these guys. One, two, three, go. So while well, it's batch rendered in the background, watch the script editor. We'll just let it do a few frames and then we'll we'll interrupt it and move on to compositing these two together. So you can watch once you punch once you batch render something, you can open the script editor by punching this icon right here. And watch it. So right here it's telling us, oh, it's finished frame one, 100%. Now let's move it on to frame two, uh, frame three. Let's get two. Whoa, it's not doing odds. Okay, we'll cut it off here in just a moment. Let it finish frame 10, then we'll interrupt it and give it a look. And cancel batch render. Yes, cancel. And I am quite confused why it seemed to skip numbers when the live frame was set to one. So now let's open up After Effects. Bunch of windows. <laughs> so while After Effects is opening up, all we're going to be doing is taking our background still and then laying these 10 frames of the animated cherry over the top and showing you how that looks. And then next up, we'll do passes. Now I now I better understand the person who asked what machine do you use for rendering. Maybe they were talking about this part of the process. It's warning me that Everything is slammed, which is true. So we will. Okay, so 
Uh, this, since this is not a class on After Effects, but on something, I will just go through it quickly. I'm going to import the background image. Background, where's my stuff? Okay. Let's make sure I'm on the right, follow this path. I style my class Thursday images. And there should be a cherry folder, but it doesn't look like there is. That's not good at all. Ooh, let's try it again. Apologies for this delay. Try again. Okay, render. Render. Oh. I'll watch here for them to pop up. And then watch here. So one different, while we're waiting for this, one difference I'll go ahead and start talking about is that um, render layers, which we're working on here, is great for sort of isolating objects, for creating ambient occlusion passes, and, and other just overriding passes. Okay, good. It looks like this is working right into this folder, um, as opposed to... So that's render layers. Render passes, uh, the, the method of that is somewhat new. It's uh, using a render buffer. So you render sort of the master color layer. You render one frame that has everything in it, and then from it you extract your indirect pass, your shadow pass, all these other things. So it's a different way uh, of, of breaking up your image and then letting you put it back together. And kudos to those of you who are in other parts of the world that are up really early. Nods to you guys. Nice. I'm seeing 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Yeah, I think 4 a.m. wins. Although, did you stay up late or wake up early? Which way does that go? All right, we're at frame six of 10. We might just let it run while we start putting them together. We'll see if we can, if I can drive an After Effects for just a moment, we'll, we'll let it keep going. Okay, so back in After Effects, I make a comp out of this background image. Of course, we don't have a, back, a proper background back there. I guess we could have turned our aliasing up a little better to make that look nicer. So we'll go into Cherry, choose that sequence, open. And right now it's just one through eight or nine, whatever it is. And we'll drop it over the top.
And let me interpret my footage a little different. Let's try it more for that. For that. Let's try that. Oh, no. And then in most compositors, you have a way of um, multiplying or whatever you're doing to your, let's do an overlay. Does that work? No. to ignore everything in the alpha. Sorry, guys. Just going to throw that on there for now and just let us preview it. Our eight frames. It's hard to do this on a low, a low resolution monitor with a GoToMeeting going on. So frame. Okay, I've got to go turn off the rendering because I can't do anything. Okay, let's cancel our batch render. Yes. Go back to After Effects. We'll reload our footage. It detects that we've got more footage. I don't know what's going on, honestly. Oh, let's open that up and check and see what it looks like. See if that works. We're showing those frames. Go, after go. I'll open sequence. So this is AppCheck, something that comes with with Maya. It's in the bin folder. And our images are here. There and there. All right, you can see that it's working. Yay. Okay, why is it not working inside of After Effects? I'll give it one more look. Oh, it's because my composition needs to be longer, maybe. Let's try remaking this comp altogether. Delete. Reload footage. Let's make a comp. Let's put it in the background underneath it. 
let's go to multiply just to get it done and let's preview it oh oh two or more frames to play back do you have two or more frames there it is it's playing it's playing it's playing oh it's got a bad frame so maybe that last frame needs to come off To trash. Okay, re reload sequence. And shorten our length. Punch it. There we go. So it's playing and there's a little bit of motion blur on there. It's alive. Let's make it 100%. Big. Let's look at it one more time. All right, that's working. So you're seeing where we're going. And the, why would you know why would we put this on its own layer? The reason we've broken this out into its own layer is we can, you know, at this point the direct our director can say, oh, I want the cherry to be more ruby, or I want it to be less red, or what have you. You know, by isolating it, by using render layers to isolate onto its own layer. It lets our director have more control, more power. Okay, thank you for your patience in stepping through that. Okay, so that is render layers. There's F check, let me close that. So that's render layers, what's going on here. So now we're going to cover in the last few, let me check our time. And we're, we started a little late with our technical difficulties, so we're gonna go, so I'm gonna basically show you how to set up uh, these render passes. We'll try to do one, a one frame batch render of all of the render passes, and then we'll pull them into AE as quickly as possible and uh, lay them over the top of each other, show you the blending modes that they need and uh, then wrap it up at that point. Okay, here we go. Back to the master layer, where we've got everything back in it. <clears throat> so now we're not going to use that cherry and reflection. We're gonna use, I'm gonna actually select everything and duplicate this, uh, this layer. So I'm gonna copy the layer, it's got everything inside of it. I'm gonna turn off the master, we're gonna call this, just our passes layer and now we're going to start creating and connecting our render passes so we right click on this render layer we go to um, add new excuse me pass contribution maps and in fact i want to select everything first let's let's make sure we're doing this right let's select the outliner select everything in the window and make sure i'm not missing anything with everything selected we're going to right click on our passes layer, go to pass contribution maps. I'll go slowly on this part. Pass contribution maps and create pass contribution map and add selected. So it just created an empty pass contribution map. We're going to call this one depth. We're going to create it. We're going to do the exact same thing about six times. Add another one. We're going to call this one diffuse no shad. As a no shadow, I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to do the same thing, pass contribution maps, and add selected. I'm going to call this one uh, indirect. Let's spell. Indirect. And let's do another one. Forgetting, I'm forgetting what's next. Um, so let's just let's just make two more, and we'll name them as I recall what they are. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four. We have five. I believe we'll have six when we're done, and we'll just do it to uh, one frame, as we mentioned. Let's pick a frame with some action. So down and his stretching is coming up, Cherry. Okay, so now next we need to open up our render settings. 
and we're going to go to the passes tab and here we're going to start creating render passes. So we open up our render passes. I'm going to use the prefix of um, cake. Oops, cake proj. And we're going to choose depth. Okay, under camera depth, we're going to choose what, diffuse without shadows. So I'm using, you know, control clicking to select each of these. We're going to do indirect. Uh, we want to do shadow. Let's see, where's that? We'll do a, a reflection and a shadow. We'll need a specular without shadows. So we've got, okay, so our total list is depth, camera depth, diffuse without shadows, indirect, reflection, and shadow and specular without shadows. So then we'll punch create, blam, and the close. So we have indirect, so I need to add, I'm going to do ruffle for reflection. I'm going to add shad. Shadow, and we'll add a spec. Spec. Okay. So now that we've made these, so we've made, so we have empty. Let me raise this up. So we have these have nothing in them. They're just um, empty slots with names on them. And then these are the scene passes we want to plug into there. So we'll first grab all of them and push them down because we want to now we're going to start connecting these associated passes to these contribution maps. So we're going to choose depth and go to our drop down and choose depth. We're going to choose diffuse no shad. Whoops, I didn't excuse me. Choose depth and depth and then we punch our associate selected passes button. Move that one down. We go diffuse no shad and diffuse no shad and push it down. Go indirect to indirect, reflection to reflection, shadow to shadow, and specular no shad to specular. I think that's the right specular. It may not be. We'll see. Okay, so now let me double check them by clicking through. So I go depth, yes. Diffuse no shad, yes. Indirect, yes. Raffle, yes. Shad, yes. And spec, yes. Okay. That is done under our passes layer. So now we're going to set this up to render these out. So right now, instead of it going to a cherry folder, let's, let's do, we're going to use, uh, it, they have these variables that you can drop in here. So I'm going to do the render layer. So it's going to call it passes. Oh, I don't want to do passes again. Passes, and then this is going to be the render pass. So here we go. If you can see my the path that will be rendered. So in the images folder, we will make a passes directory, and then inside of there, we will see depth, no shad, and direct reflection, shad, and specular. And hopefully these will come through okay. Um, and we're just going to do one frame, and it has to be done through batch. You can only get these uh, when you use batch. So I'm going to go to start and end frame of 24, both. Since you know I went through that uh, quickly, I'm happy to repeat anything. Although I know some of you guys are up at 4 in the morning also. Great job, you guys. Um, here we go. So 24, 24. Hello. That makes no sense. Twenty-four. Okay. Five. We'll do a single frame then. Single frame. Well, I guess we'll be doing frame one if it's. Oh, now it is taking. No, it's not showing up. 
Okay, now it's working. There we go. So let's close that render setting. Double check that it's going to go to images, passes, render pass. We're doing all these passes of frame 24. And then, so we're going to go, let me save my scene so it doesn't blow up after we typed all that in. Five. So we're going to go render, pull up our batch render and punch batch render. Watch it in the script editor. Also watch it in, we'll look for our passes window. Should be created shortly. All right, so it made our passes folder. That's wonderful. So the way that this works is it creates, it'll create the you know, sort of the the master layer render, the final the final render, if you will, where where one frame will look like a beauty pass, and that we should have subdirectories and, and put all of these these other images uh, of each of these different passes into those folders. But it won't do that until it finishes. Oh, and I did. I am remembering we will have things like indirect will be black because I didn't turn on file gather or direct lighting. There they all come. Yay. So they all have placeholders written out. And it's rendering away. So we'll let that finish. And we'll rebuild that image in After Effects and then we'll call it a night. And call it a class too. So yeah, this is taking a minute. It's fifteen percent done. So while we're waiting for this frame to come out, I can uh, I can give a plug for my buddy's movie who I uh, worked on that was just released in the states. So here is my, let me drag it over. Oops. Oh, it's really hard to do things with a frame rendering on your box. So here is my IMDB page. It's moving really slow. So this is me, Paul Campbell, and apparently I'm the ninth is there's so many Paul Campbells in the world on IMDb. So these are some of the films I've worked on. And just recently, I worked on a guy local here. I live in uh, near Nashville, Tennessee. And this movie, After, has just been released uh, to, I want to say Cinemarks are releasing them. But this, this guy made this movie, went and tried, and tried to sell it to the studios. No one picked it up. So we went and built a relationship with the movie theater, and they are distributing it for him. And there's some fun out and some work in there. There's some Krakatoa smoke that was worked on. Um, there's a spoiler alert. There's a, a CG. Let's see the best way to say it without giving anything away. It's a CG biped in this movie. So uh, after and and some there's several scenes that are filmed in my hometown so that's really cool this movie is out there in the theaters but it's not uh it's not getting a lot of or i don't think it's getting enough press it'd be great if uh, more people were aware of this 
of this movie after. But anyways, it's my most recent uh, one. It's been a while since I've worked on a feature. It's been since 2006 since I've worked on a feature. And before then, since uh, between here, it's just been smaller stuff. Um, character animation jobs, commercial jobs, stuff like that. So let's see how we're doing. This is taking a while. Must have set the resolution too high. I'm going to cancel it and lower my resolution. Oh, didn't set it too high, but we're going to make it really small. 640 by 480. Here we go. Uh -oh. Let's try again. It's going a lot faster now. Let me shrink it. <clears throat> yes, it was the uh... Someone made a comment on me having worked on Star Wars. I can say that being being at a big studio with a lot of history was an amazing experience. Being at a place like ILM that's been through the transition from traditional making little little models in the model shop like we see in the original Star Wars where Death Star is a model and every ship is something that somebody made by hand and they're using film cameras and all kinds of stuff and for that company to make that transition and to lead the way into digital and then to continue while I, while I was there, it was evolving more. And then since I've left, it's even pushed, pushed the marker even further, having worked on them, having completed movies like Transformers, working on things like Avatar, stuff like that. So pretty much anything that comes out of ILM is always amazing to me. And I enjoy having had those relationships with people out there. <clears throat> Apologies again for this taking a while. bring out this entertaining CG memes site while we're still waiting. computer can't work this with <sighs> what I think I have something that we can we're gonna look. We're gonna. We're gonna cancel this, and we're gonna look at something else. This is taking way too long. Apologies again. Here we go. We're gonna cancel this, and I'm going to find a job that I've done. Job I've done recently. 
that should have all that we need to see in it, although it's not with our scene. You saw how I set that up? Okay, so you saw how I created those, these contribution paths, depth, diffuse, no shadow, indirect, reflection, occlusion, shadow pass, and specular. And there is another, there's a scene that I've taught to my university students, but I just realized I have that's got all those same things. It's not your, it's not your cake scene, but it's got all these, all these passes in it. So let's see if I can explain this one. Well, now the fact that it's already put together. Okay, so the first thing that we would do is if we were use, you know, using the, the frames that were generated here, is if you'll notice, there's a master beauty, and then we have all the render passes you know, uh, labeled here. So this master beauty looks like so. So this, this is just a comp with just the master beauty render in it. No, no, other, no other passes. It's just that pass. Okay, so now when we go to, and so there should be, if we've done everything right, if I've comped all these other passes correctly, there should be basically no change between the master beauty and then the comp that has all these render passes. In it. So let me just talk you through these passes. So we'll start with, let me just turn all these off. Start with depth. So the depth, excuse me, we'll start with a shadow that's up on top. So the, the mode that we want to blend with is the, Let's make sure I'm saying this right. Is the difference mode for the shadow? So this is what the shadow pass looks like for this image. You can see shadows here, here. There's even shadows in the reflection. So we have a shadow pass, and then all of our lights are set to add. So we have indirect. I can show them one at a time to you. This is so this indirect light. It's almost like radiosity or GI, where it's the color spill is spilling onto things. If you'll notice, you know this white cube, um, cube sphere item, you know, is getting red spilled to it on this side and blue spilled to it on this side. Um, then the reflection. This is our reflection pass. So you can see which items are reflective. Uh, we've got a specular pass. A uh, and this is just the straight up diffuse, just a flat color, and then our diffuse no shad. So when you put all of those together, they look exactly the same, except that now we have control. You know, we can we can do we can do things to the colors. We can lighten the shadows. I can go to the opacity of the shadows and turn them down turn them down so they're not as, excuse me, this is the diffuse color I mean to be on the shadow pass. Uh, we, I can turn the shadows down and they're lightened. So now when I switch back and forth, you can see that the from the original, the shadows are darker back to this one. So I've lightened the shadows. And in here, in here we could do things of, you know, playing with the indirect lights. We can, we could change some colors. Uh, we could just do whatever we want to do. We could do some color correction on things. Uh, we could just go crazy. But anyways, you guys have been patient enough. I've gone, I've gone over, but I just wanted to do very quickly walk through. So I'll, I'm going to restate it one last time before we wrap it. Um, you know, here we have depth, diffuse, and direct reflection, shadow, and specular. And the way that those are handled is the shadow pass is set to difference. All of the lighting passes are set to add. And your diffuse no shadow is at the bottom set to normal, and we're not. This is not a part of this comp. This, this one is not here. The diffuse no shad is the base the base color that everything else is built on top of. All right, um, that does it. Talking about the with the passes. Thank you for your patience and with me letting me change over to using a different scene to finish off that part. Let's see, there's a couple of questions that have come in. And then if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and hit me up, and then we'll, once those are done, we'll wrap it up for the night. Here it says, do you composite final animation in Premiere, or do you use After Effects? And this, this is After Effects that I'm using here. This may, 
I don't know what time you sent that question in, but yeah, this is After Effects. Um, and I have not composited things before and using Premiere. Um, just use AE and Nuke and used to use Fusion, stuff like that. Um, yeah, any, uh, any other questions from anyone? And if not, we will wrap it up. Homework. Homework. Do we do homework on the last class of the session? Yes, or at least I'd like to see people's final renders. Excellent. Well, I would say then to have people render out their render out their animation and kick out a QuickTime. I didn't talk about the best version of a of of a QuickTime to kick out, but uh, yes. Do our students have access to put their frames together into something? Would there be um, something you can images? put things together in something like this is always Virtual Devil like or something. Windows Movie Maker or something. If you yeah. really have nothing. Okay. Well yeah, let's 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 let the homework be create you know, render out render out your animation. If the simple step would be to render out your bait your the first example that I showed with render layers of just having your cherry that's a render layer animated on top of your table and cake and cup scene. And if you want to go advanced for your homework, uh, go for the passes, and then you can have control over things, and you could like, you could even, uh, you would have the flexibility of adjusting the color of your, uh, of, of items. So yeah, the homework would be then to render out your frames, your 100 frames, create a QuickTime movie, and uh, show, share with me uh, how do we, how would I submit them, or share them with the class. Uh, we have a system set up already. Uh, use Dropbox and they send it to me and I mark them. And Excellent. Well, we would do that then and that, that would be to Chris, right? Yeah. The, um, I'll post a thread in the Member Sponsor okay. Lounge explaining the homework. Excellent. Okay, well yeah, if, if there's anything, any other closing remarks being that I'm a rookie uh, jumping in on the last last class, feel free to wrap it up if there's anything else I've missed. Someone says, is the sparkler still a requirement? Yes, the sparkler is still a requirement. All right. So the answer is yes. Oh yes, good question from Ray, uh, Raven777 asking about Maya 102. I'm in fact, I in fact will be putting together a curriculum for 102. I imagine we'll be doing things like um, uh, particles, possibly some fluid sims, kind of some uh, things going in that direction. But you, I, I will be putting that together, and you guys will be getting an email about what 102 will be. And I like Dynamics 2, definitely. All right. There was a question, yes, hopefully we will have more dynamics then, and my answer is yes, more dynamics for sure. Okay, I think we are done if there's no more questions. Excellent. I agree. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to Chris and Nelson, and thank you guys for your uh, patience with me. That was uh, that was great. I enjoyed showing all that stuff. And you guys have okay. good questions. Good stuff. Okay. Right. Well. Thank you, everyone.